So to take this one step further, I'm gonna add a sound effect so that when the object is collected, there's a little bit of auditory feedback for the player. And this is just good game design. It also makes it a whole lot more fun to pick these things up. So what I've done is I've gone onto the asset store and I've downloaded the sound effects retro pack. It's a free uh, sound pack that's available and we're gonna use some of the, uh, maybe some of the coin sounds here. So let's go back in and set some of this up. I'm gonna go back into my scene and on my collectible here, I'm gonna add in a new component and I'm gonna add in an audio source. We wanna change things around a little bit here. First off, we wanna turn off the play on awake. We don't want this to be a sound effect as soon as the game gets started or as soon as the object appears on the, on this, uh, in the level, but rather we want the uh, audio to only play when we tell it to. So if we look here into our folder here uh, with all our sound effects, we have this option here for power-ups and I'm gonna choose power-up 19. I'm going to drag that into my audio source here where, uh, for audio clip. There's a bunch of other options here that you can play around with that are a bit beyond what I want to do in this tutorial. Next thing we need to do, we need to tell this audio source to play. It is important how we do these things and how the order that we do it. If we do this right after we've turned the game object off, this code is not gonna get called. We're not going to actually uh, hear this audio source. So what we need to do is do a little bit of a rearrangement here on our flow graph. Uh, I'm gonna grab this object and, or this unit and move it out of the way. And I can delete this connection. If I kind of hover over this uh, node over here, I can right click and get rid of that connection. To get the audio source to play, I can go over to my inspector and drag that audio source in. Now it's gonna give me a bunch of options here. And if I choose play, do audio play and we want this here audio source play we're gonna do this and again you can see here we've selected self so we're gonna be looking for audio source on the same object and then if I connect true to a play audio source this audio source will play when I enter it so let's push play and see if that works so as I enter that trigger that plays if I enter again it's gonna keep playing because my objects not disappearing so I've added some audio feedback, but the object's not disappearing. So let's work on that next. So there's a couple ways we can do this, but we really need to think about the effect that we want and how we want our game to flow. And there's no right or wrong way to do this, but we just need the right outcome. So now there's a couple things that we need to have happen here. We need the visualization of the object to disappear or turn off rather. And we also need this trigger to not function anymore so that the player can't run through this a second time. And we want to do this without turning off the whole game object, because if we turn off the whole game object, this object audio source will stop playing. So what we can do is, first thing we can do is drag the sphere collider down onto our flow graph. And if we come down here to sphere collider, we can find the enabled set option. And what that's gonna allow us to do is toggle whether this sphere collider component is active or not. So let's connect the control flow. And we're gonna leave this option as false so that the collider turns off and we won't be able to trigger it by running through it uh, a second time. We also wanna turn off the sphere visualization and we can do that as well by dragging the sphere onto our flow graph. And this one's a little bit harder to find. We can look at game object um, set and we can get set active, this option here. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna connect the uh, flow option, the flow control. We're gonna leave this value as off as well. Let's push play and see what happens. So now if I run through my sphere, I get my sound effect and you'll notice that the sphere disappeared. So if we look in our hierarchy, we can see that the sphere collider has been turned off while the overall game object is still turned on. And our sphere object, the visualization, the child of our collectible object, that whole object has been turned off so we can no longer see the object. We've achieved the effect that we're looking for. We haven't removed the object from the scene, we haven't destroyed it, and we haven't turned the whole object off, but the desired effect is there. Now, if you're gonna create a large game with a large number of collectibles, it may be desirable to turn that game object off so it's not being actively dealt with by Unity, or you may even want to destroy it or use a more sophisticated pooling system. And definitely pooling is beyond what we're going to get into.
So this is a good time to show some extra features of Bolt. I'm gonna go exit out of play mode and I'm gonna click on my on trigger event here in my flow graph. And if I look over here in my graph inspector, there's this option here to run this as a coroutine. Now, if you're gonna have uh, wait times, if you need to wait a certain amount of time for something to happen, you need to do that in a coroutine. And that's true in C-sharp as well. Uh, there's probably other ways to do it, but that's certainly one of the easiest. So we're gonna turn this on as a coroutine. And what that's gonna allow us to do as it says here, we're gonna be able to use wait times. So I'm gonna rearrange here to give myself a little bit more space. Then after we turn off the sphere object, I'm gonna drag this control down and I'm gonna search for wait. And I can wait for seconds. So what we can do here is put in a value for how long we wanna wait and then it's gonna run some more code. So for example, I could put in a delay of two seconds. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn off our collectible. So I'm gonna drag this control option over and we're gonna go once again, game object, set active. So once again, it's automatically populated the game object with itself and the um, set active option is turned off. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna turn off our collider, we're gonna turn off the visualization, we're gonna wait two seconds and then we're gonna turn off the whole object. And that can be a little bit of an optimization if some other code is running on there. Uh, this is not the most sophisticated way to do it, uh, but it works. So let's see what happens when we push play. So I'm going to run through the object, get a sound effect, the collider turned off, and then you saw two seconds later this turned off, and now our collectible object is turned off. That's not totally necessary, but it is a good example of how we can use the coroutines and wait times very, very easily with Bolt. So there you go, we've created a collectible. So in the next video, we'll look at how to keep track of how many of these objects the player has collected and have something happen when a certain number of those objects have been collected. So thanks for joining, hope to see you next time.